Welcome back to Learning New Testament Greek, and today we're going to start talking about second declension nouns. Well, why second declension? Why not first? Well, because first declension nouns are a little harder to learn than second, and we need to get these ideas down well before we tackle those. So we're going to learn second declension nouns first. All right. Recall verbs had endings, endings that were based on their, uh, their, their number and then their person and how they're being used, their tense, and all that good stuff. Well, nouns also have endings, and their endings change based on uh, their case, their number, and their gender. So we're going to take a look at these, these case endings. All right, what are our cases? Let's make us a chart. What are our cases? We have the nominative. I am abbreviating. I like to abbreviate my cases with a three-letter uh, abbreviation or if I'm in a real hurry, a uh, one-letter abbreviation, but I'm just going to abbreviate for, for time's sake here. Uh, the nominative, and then what's next? We have the genitive case, followed by the ablative case. The dative comes next. Then the locative. And the instrumental. The accusative and the vocative case. Now, we need to divide up. Uh, will, will we ever cases out? Oh, gender. The primary genders of second declension nouns are masculine and neuter. Now, there are a couple feminines in there, but they're, they're a little different. We'll talk about those later on, perhaps. Uh, but primarily, you're going to have masculine and neuter nouns in the second declension. So, we're going to write out our, uh, our paradigm here. These on this side are going to be masculine. And these on this side are going to be neuter. Alright. Now, what else do we got? We need number. These are going to be singular endings, and these are going to be plural endings. Singular, and plural. So I have me a chart here. All right. Now that I have my chart, let's get to work writing out some endings. Get a different color so it stands out a little better against the uh, the blue chart pieces. Okay. Non nominative. Well, a masculine singular nominative. The ending is os. Masculine singular genitive is u. Masculine singular ablative is u. Masculine singular dative is o with an iota subscript. Masculine singular locative is o with an iota subscript. Masculine singular instrumental is o with an iota subscript. Masculine singular accusative is on. And masculine singular vocative is Os, u, u, o, 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 on, e. Remember, the Oda subscript doesn't affect the pronunciation, but it is a vital part. And this is one of the reasons I say that, because without the Oda subscript, this uh, it'd be hard to tell it's a dative, locative, or instrumental. Uh, with it, you can tell quickly that that's, that's what it is, because that's how you spell the, the ending for the dative, the locative, and the instrumental. So don't forget your Oda subscripts. All right. So, masculine plural nominative is oi. Masculine plural genitive is on. Masculine, masculine plural ablative is on. Masculine plural dative is ois. Masculine plural locative, ois. Masculine plural instrumental, ois. Masculine plural accusative is us. There you go. My brain just stopped there and said, wait a minute, what chart am I on? Okay, masculine plural vocative is oi. Now for the neuters. Neuter singular nominative is on. Neuter, neuter singular genitive is u. Neuter singular ablative is 
u, neuter, singular, dative, is o with an omega, omega subscript. Neuter, singular, locative, is o with an iota subscript. Neuter, singular, instrumental, is o with an iota subscript. Neuter, singular, accusative, is on, no, no iota subscript. And neuter, singular, vocative, is on. Now for the plurals. Neuter, plural, nominative, is a. Neuter, plural, genitive, is on. Neuter, plural, ablative, is on. Neuter, plural, dative, is ois. Neuter, plural, locative, is ois. Neuter, plural, instrumental, is ois. Neuter, plural, accusative, is a. And neuter, plural, vocative, is a. And there you go. That is the all the endings for the uh, or we second declension nouns, masculine and neuter. Now there's some things you need to notice about about this chart. You're gonna say, well, these the genitive and ablative look an awful lot alike because it's oh, ooh, ooh, own, ooh, own, ooh, own, ooh, own. They look all the same. The dative, locative, and instrumental, they look an awful lot alike, because it's o, 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 ois, 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 o, 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 ois, ois, ois. And saying, hold on, what's going on here? Well, this is why we have the five case system, because they group the genitive and ablative together. They call all these genitives based on their form. We're basing them on their function. Um, likewise, they group the dative, locative, instrumental all into dative because they all share the same form. So, if you'd like to, uh, I guess, simplify, this is one way, I, one reason I kind of like the 5K system a little better, because it doesn't take so long to do the, the charts. But if you want to do a little quicker, we could uh, do nominative, group genitive and ablative together, dative, locative, and instrumental, Accusative and vocative. Then do your chart like that. Uh, singular, plural, singular, plural, masculine, and neuter. Now, it'll be a little quicker and easier. So we have os, u, o, on, Oi, on, ois, on, oi. That is not on, that is us. This is on. I'm getting a hit of myself, isn't that terrible? On, u, o, on, on, a, on, Ois, ah, ah. See, that's easier to, and quicker to write out than all that. So choose whichever you like. This will have you writing more, but you can do this quicker. But practice these charts. Write them out and practice them. Learn them. Know them better than the back of your own hand. Okay. Now you're probably looking at them thinking, wow, that's a lot of stuff. How do we use this? Okay. We're going to take a word and we're going to uh, we're going to go over the chart a little. All right, our word. I need a different color. I don't want it to blend in with everything else. How about green? One of my favorite words, carpos. Carpos means fruit. So carpos. Now recall, verbs had what we called a lexical form and a stem. Lexical form for verbs was the present active indicative first person singular, like Lego. And Lego is the, the lexical form of, well, Lego. But the lexical form of a noun is the nominative singular. 
Now you're saying, well, masculine or neuter. Well, a word is generally, generally, only one, uh, only one gender. Karpos here is a masculine. So for the karpos, you ignore that half of the chart and that half of the chart. So you only look at the masculines. So the nominative singular is the lexical form of the word. Uh, now, if I had the word Doron, Doron is a neuter. So its lexical form is going to be on instead of os because it's a neuter word. And neuter words ignore that part of the chart. Uh, let's see if I can get my... There we go. So neuters don't care what the masculine endings are because they're neuter. They care about these endings. You understand? Uh, okay, well, we'll get there if you don't. So karpos and doron. Now we need to find the stem because you add endings to a stem, just like in verbs. So how did we get a uh, stem from our verb? We took its lexical form and we dropped the ending we knew. So we take karpos and we drop the ending, which is os. Karp is our stem, and for doron, door is our stem. So now we can take and we can we can decline it. To decline, we would say karpos. That's a horrible spelling. Karpu. Karp. Oh, and so on and so forth. And for Doron, Doron, Do, Ru, Do, Ro, and so on and so forth. And recall for the gender of the word, you use that portion of the chart. You don't have to go Karpas, Karpu. Karpas, Karpu, Karpo, Karpon, Karpe, Karpoi, and then the rest then start up again saying Karpon, Karpu, Karpo. No, this is these endings, although they, they share endings between the masculine and neuter. That's why they're in the same declension. They share endings, but Karpos only uses the masculine endings, while Doron only uses the neuter endings. You got that? I hope so. All right, so I've given you a lot to think about, so go ahead and learn this chart, or we'll start to learn the chart, and get it down pretty good, and if you like, you can even give, uh, try out finishing declining uh, Karpos or Doron here, and I'll see you next time.